Good morning. Today we learn how to create a stopwatch using code.org. The first step is to design the stopwatch. So I am in the design view and we need three things. One, the label for minute, one, the label for second, and lastly, the label for tenth of a millisecond. So what I will do is I'll quickly drag a label and replace the text to zero. I will set the width to let's say 100 and i would set the font size to let's say 35 okay i need to increase the height so if i put the height to 30 40 okay now it looks good uh maybe i can increase the size to 40 as well okay so what we need to do is quickly copy these two more times so that we have for one for minute, one for second, and one for tenth of a millisecond. So we have got this three. Now what we need to do is quickly add the divider between these. So maybe a small label with the colon, which clearly separates out the minute and the second and the tenth of a millisecond. So again, I'll copy this quickly. Okay, now I have the dividers in place. This looks okay. This looks okay. Now what we need to do is we need to add two buttons. One for the start and one for the stop. So I will drag a button. And then I will say start. I will let's say maybe change the colors to match the theme. Let's say other. Okay, let's keep it this. We will change the color if needed later. And I'll copy this. This should be stop. Uh, I'll change the color of the stop to maybe something grayish. Uh, okay. okay, not that pretty, but yeah, we're good with this. So start and stop. Okay. One last thing before we move to the code, maybe I'll add a heading at the top saying that it's a, it is a stopwatch. Okay, and again, I need to increase the width. Let's say I keep it to 150, height to 50, and I need to increase the font size. Let's say I increase it to 45, too big, let's say 25. Okay. So I just need to increase the width slightly more and then we should be good. So, okay, perfect. So we have a decent design, not that great, but we are good with it. That now that we have design in place, it's time to go to the code view. Okay. So in order to go to the code view, the first thing is that when I click on the start, the processing should start or the stopwatch should begin. So the first step is to drag the on event block and i need to say that i look at the id okay when button one gets clicked you need to start the stopwatch and in order to do that i need to maintain three variables one for minute one for second and one for tenth of a millisecond okay i call it ms okay now what i need to do is every 10 milliseconds i need to increment the last uh this last count then after one second, I need to increment this count. And after one minute, I need to increment this count. And once I increment a second, I need to reset the milliseconds. And once I increment the minute, I need to reset the seconds. Okay. In order to do so, what we will do is we'll use a time loop. Okay. A time loop is something which gets executed after every 10 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds, depending on what we get. So for our case, we need to, we'll use a time loop which gets executed after every 10 milliseconds. So after every 10 milliseconds, we need to in increment this last number. So what we will do is we'll say ms is equal to ms plus one. And then we need to do a set text. We need to do a set text on label three. So I will set it to ms. So after every 10 milliseconds, this number should get incremented. And when we complete one second which is ms equal equals to 100 we need to say okay ms 
is equal to 0. So reset the MS and increment the second by 1. And lastly, again, I need to do a set text to label 2 and set it to the number of seconds. Now let's see whether it works or not. And once it works, we will make it work for the minute as well. So let me click on the run. Okay, it works. It works. So what I need to do is now I need to say that when we have 60 seconds, then you need to reset the second and increment the minute by one. As we did it for seconds, we need to do a similar logic for the minutes. And again, same thing, set text. And we will do a label one to minute. And we should be good. So label one, label two, label three. So what we, in order to test it, let's quickly run it again and let's see if it works. So, so it works. And uh, you know, let it run uh, before we, so that we don't need to wait for one minute to check whether this minute thing is working or not. And meanwhile, what we'll do is we'll start writing the code for the stop button. So for the stop, what we need is that when a person clicks on the stop, we need to simply stop this loop and reset all the variables, minutes, second, and milliseconds to zero. Okay, so again, we'll go to the UI controls and we'll drag the on, ev on event block and I will put it outside of this. Okay, and the ID of the button is button two. Okay, so I need to say that, okay, when the person is, uh, button 2 is pressed, we need to go to the control and use the stop time loop, which will stop the loop. Okay, so once the stop time loop is done, we need to reset all the variables to 0. So I will say minimum is equal to 0. And I will say second is equal to 0. And I will say ms is equal to 0. And I will then quickly do a set text so that uh, I can see these variables on my screen. Label 1 to minute. And I will just quickly copy this and make it work for seconds and milliseconds. So label 2 is for seconds. And label 3 is for milliseconds and i think we should be good so let me quickly reset it and run it again let me do a start so it is working let me click on stop it is working start again stop again okay awesome so we have a working stopwatch built completely on code.org in which we use three variables to maintain minute, second, and tenth of a millisecond count. And using a timed loop, we are able to build a working stopwatch. So we'll finish the video here. Thank you.